Most people who build these cars or any ground up race car take much longer than a few months. Years, a lot of times. So it was perhaps impractical for me to start this project in January and expect to be running for Speed Week. For those of you who don't know, Speed Week starts right now. And you might have guessed that this car will not make it. If I had really wanted this car to be done in time, I could have made it happen, but the truth is I got kind of burnt out on it. I was spending too much time on it, not really enjoying it, and if I'm not enjoying it, then what's the point? Some of you commented on this in the last video, noticing that I had a distinct lack of enthusiasm, so we're pushing it back. There are a couple of El Mirage events later this year. We'll make one of those. Here's the thing about going to Bonneville. It wouldn't have really mattered anyway. This car doesn't have a body, and it's not going to break any records without a body. The body is a large project. It will get done over the off-season. There will be multiple videos on that, and if it goes anything like my previous fiberglass projects, those videos will have lots of profanity. But that comes later. First, we need to get the car driving. And to get the car driving, we need the engine running. If you've gone through my previous videos, you know that I have two vehicles powered by Megasquirt engine control units. I like them. They're relatively inexpensive and they have all the capabilities I need. And there is a ton of support online for all sorts of weird installations. And all my stuff is weird. I got all my Megasquirt stuff from DIYAutotune.com. So when I was ready to ECU this bad boy, I called them up and asked them if they wanted to sponsor the build. They said, uh, yeah, definitely. So I got an ECU from them. This is actually the exact same ECU I have in my Honda S600, the MS3 Pro Evo. I could have gotten away with the Micro Squirt. I have this on my 250 swapped Honda Grom. If you're looking for the really inexpensive fuel injection solution, this is it. On the Land Speed car, I went with the bigger MS3 Pro because it has several more inputs and outputs. It has faster and better data logging, and it's a bit better at dealing with things like boost and different fuels. I also got my fuel injectors from DIY Auto-Tune, some 72 pound hour Bosch injectors. These will be able to flow a lot of fuel so I can slap a turbo on this guy at some point and see if I can blow it up. I'm not going to get too deep into the wiring and tuning specifics of this ECU because I have two previous videos on that. So if you have any questions, check those out. I'll put the links in the description. On this build, I'm using a power distribution module that has programmable circuit breakers and relays. This one is the Apogee made by Arboreal Systems. These are often used on motorcycles, and this is basically a motorcycle. This can activate outputs based on inputs or temperature, CAN bus messages, or vehicle speed, which I think will come in handy in the future. I'm shoving all these modules and wires under the seat. I had to move my shoulder harness bar down, so I'm losing a little bit of space here, but I should still have enough room. I got the BMW harness from the motorcycle engine so I could steal connectors from it, the temperature sensor, knock sensor, a few others. I reused the existing temperature sensor. I talked about this in one of the earlier Mega Squirt videos, but you can heat up water with the sensor in the water and just get three different temperatures and resistances and then program that into the ECU. The rest of the harness came with the MS3 Pro. It has two waterproof connectors with several wires coming out of each. I used about half the wires. There are a lot of extra wires for inputs and outputs. When you're done, you can remove the unused wires with this tool, but you'll need to plug the hole with one of these guys. Just shove it in there. You can, of course, just cut the wire short and then shove them out of the way, but this is way cleaner. I used these split looms to protect the wires. They're not the most robust, but there is a very high likelihood that I'll be modifying this harness in the future, and these make that way easier. I'm using a combination pressure and temperature sensor for the manifold. These are pretty cheap and robust. They put them on a few turbocharged Mazdas. It's good for three bars of boost. I found the data sheet online to program the ECU and verified it with some bench testing. The cam sensor that came with the BMW had three wires, making me think it was a Hall effect sensor, but I didn't know if it was 5 volts or 12 volts or which wires did what. So I kind of just prodded it with a multimeter, then prodded it with some voltage before realizing that I wasn't getting anything expected out of it, which means I probably fried it. So I called up my buddies at DIY Auto-Tune and got one of their Hall Effect sensors. The sensor did need to be modified. I had to drill out the hole to get the screw in, and I also needed to make a spacer for it to get the right spacing to the trigger wheel. The trigger wheel was another issue. I need one trigger per revolution. I had this problem on my Honda, but I just cut off these two teeth of the trigger wheel and then bolted it back on the camshaft. The BMW does not have a trigger wheel bolted to the camshaft. It has the trigger wheel cast into the camshaft. Also, it looks like this. So I had to remove the exhaust cam from the engine and carefully grind off all of these parts. But now it works. I got new coils. I talked about this last time. These are from a GMC Yukon. I made a bracket to hold them in the right place here. The wires are MSD motorcycle wires. I sealed these up to the engine to keep water out. I did this by adding a tapered plug with a hole in it around the wires. Then I used the tops off of the old coils to seal between the plugs and the valve cover. 
Several of you noticed in my last video that I seem to have a wire going to one of the 2x4s supporting my car. Why is this here? Well, I hadn't yet hooked up my starter solenoid. So to turn the engine over, I just ran a wire from the starter and sort of just shoved it into this screw to crank the engine over. It's not the best solution, but remember, if it's stupid, but it works, it might still burn your house down. I should have probably done this when I bought the engine, but I finally did a compression test on all the cylinders. All good. Everything over 180 PSI. Lots of compression. The next step was to test the camshaft and crankshaft sensors. Tuner Studio has a tab for high-speed data loggers. This will spit out a spike every time it sees the crankshaft signal. This engine has 60 teeth per revolution, so you'll see 60 spikes in a pattern. The pattern is because the engine slows down during compression and speeds up during expansion. These are errors. You'll always see these at the beginning because the engine has to turn over a couple of times before it reads the camshaft sensor and knows where it's at. So far, everything looks good. With all that done, it was time to check with a timing light. In theory, cranking the engine should cause the timing strobe to go off every time the spark plug fires. Of course, this never works the first time. There's always some setting or wiring problem that keeps it from- Oh! It's flashing! Sweet! Wow. All right. Next up is to adjust the timing. Remember that single trigger on the camshaft trigger wheel? Well, you have to tell the MS3 Pro how many degrees top dead center of cylinder number one is before the sensor sees that trigger. I just picked a random number and cranked the engine over. There are two dots on these two gears, one here and one here. When these dots align, that's top dead center. So I just cranked the engine over with the timing light flashing at the dots. They didn't line up, so I added 10 degrees to my randomly picked number and it got closer. Then I kept doing this until it was flashing right where the dots were lining up. And that's it, 120 degrees before top dead center. Once this was good, we plugged in some values for the fuel and spark map and tried to see if we could get it to fire. Of course, this never works the first time. There's always some missing setting or bad... Oh, oh, it worked again. That's nice. All right, we're on the right track. We fiddled around with the settings, adjusting fuel, adjusting spark advance, and messing with the throttle body, and we finally got it to start. For a few seconds. High five denied. Before we got too far, I decided that pissing off all my neighbors with an open pipe exhaust revving up was not a great idea. Fortunately, I had measured the Grom muffler and it was just the right size. It's supposed to slip over the exhaust, but this is a larger exhaust and it just happens to slip right inside the exhaust pipe. Sweet. We had adjusted a lot of fuel into the engine, so we decided to recheck everything and noticed that one of our base fuel settings was wrong, so we fixed that and started over. Eventually it was running and would stay running and everything was looking great until... An oil line exploded. Oh, it's everywhere. So we cleaned it up and took a lunch break. Later on, we had it started and running well, but the engine was starting to overheat. I mentioned this in my last video, but I didn't actually size this heat exchanger. This was just a guess and test engineering decision. The engine was overheating, but the water in the tank at the front was barely warm. This is not good. I can buy a larger heat exchanger, but it seemed like this one wasn't rejecting hardly any heat at all, which means I would need a much larger exchanger. Something didn't seem right. This thing shouldn't be that bad. Wait, did we forget to plug in the water? P oh, we did. Cool thing about this power distribution module, it comes with a couple of temperature probes. You can set up any of the outputs to PWM based on your temperature. So I could have this set up so the pump doesn't come on until a certain engine temperature, then it could slowly ramp up its speed as the engine gets hotter. I just have it on all the time right now, but this is a possible future addition. This thing runs and revs, but the next step is to get it on a dyno so I can tune it under load. For that, I need a trailer. Last time I took this thing out of the garage, I took it to El Mirage for a tech inspection, but I didn't actually take it out of the trailer. That's because I needed to use my engine hoist to get it in and out of the trailer. It's a huge pain in the ass. So I'll need to buy and modify a boat trailer or something. This is another problem for future Matt. You can program the MS3 Pro with a laptop, but you can also use the Raspberry Pi. People will sometimes use these for dashboards. It's a pretty easy setup. You just buy the Raspberry Pi, the seven inch touchscreen, the case, and an SD card, load up the Raspberry Pi OS onto the card, download the Linux version of Tuner Studio, and you're good to go. I'm not sure this will be super robust in the desert or on the salt flats, but it also cost me about 150 bucks, which is cheap enough to give it a shot. This will not only allow me to monitor different gauges while driving, but I can also run the auto-tune feature of the software to try and get a better tune while I'm driving the car. I can do this with data logging, but it's way easier this way. And that's it. The engine is running. The suspension is all together, the chassis, most of the safety systems. I still need a tail for the parachutes. I still need to run some fire suppression lines and about 30 other small things, all of which will each have 20 new things to do. 
But I feel like I'm actually close. And with another five weeks until the next El Mirage event, I feel a lot better about this. I'm having fun. But I'm not going to get much done this week because this week is Speed Week, and I'm going to go watch all of the other fast cars. Then again, maybe not. It used to be that you had to impress people to get people to watch your show. Now you just have to impress the algorithm. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. All hail the algorithm. <laughs>